There's a lot been going on in the USA recently, from rows over Joe Biden's support for Israel, threatening aid to Ukraine, uh, to the public bracing for a potential rerun of Trump versus Biden next year. So let's take a look at what was said in the White House this week. I don't want to be trying to bake in long-term support when you're at the end of the rope. And uh, in Ukraine, on the Ukraine funding, we're we're coming near to the end of the rope. I mean, today we announced $200 million, um, and we'll keep that aid going as long as we can, but it, it's, it's not going to be indefinite. Well, to get the latest, we're joined by Democratic political analyst Namika Konst. But, uh, uh, Namika, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if you heard that clip there from the White House earlier this week. Um, it seemed, very, uh, seemed to sneak that out very quietly. It seemed to be a big shift in American policy. That, I mean, before we've heard that Ukraine will get whatever they need for as long as they need it. Uh, it seems that there was a definite change in emphasis there. Is, is that because of the support that America's now having to give to Israel? Or is it because Trump's promise to end the war in Ukraine quickly is going down well with voters? I, I actually think it has to do with the shutdown, um, and the next moving shutdown, and the speaker's race. Uh, we are in a very prickly situation, as you might be aware, in the House of Representatives right now. So we have our appropriation set for a short period of time, which is what he's referring to, um, by the previous Congress before we had our, our uh, before we had our stall in terms of who the speaker is going to be. As soon as we know who that speaker is going to be, and if it is Jim Jordan, Jim Jordan has said, Representative Jordan has said that he is not in favor of funding Ukraine, which is an existential threat to the United States uh, and to security around the world. So I believe that if sooner we have a speaker in place that is not uh, echoing Donald Trump's pro-Russia talking points, we are going to be in a situation that we can further the funding that we've been allocating all along. I think Kirby was relying to, uh, was relaying the points of the situation right now, which is purely that the appropriations are going to run out within a couple of months until we have a new speaker, until we have a new Congress, uh, leader, congressional leadership, and we can plan for the next several months. But President Biden has said over and over, he's made the case, even last week, that we are firmly committed to Ukraine, and he will make that, that case to the American people. Donald Trump wants to play pro-Russia pro and talk about, you know, how we should be funding wars. Donald Trump doesn't want to fund anything. He doesn't want to fund the American people. He doesn't want to fund wars. He wants to basically rip apart any form of democracy or standing up for democracy. And that uh, is dangerous. That's dangerous for all of us. That's dangerous for the UK. You guys know more than anybody uh, what that does to your system and your economy. So, but, you know, it's about the government. Namiki, you, 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 you don't like Donald Trump, but he's surging ahead of Joe Biden in the, in the opinion polls in, in America. I mean, Joe Biden's, if he's the candidate at the general election, he's going to just hand the, you're just handing the, the, uh, the results over to the Republicans, aren't you? Surely Biden isn't going to be your candidate at the uh, presidential election, is he? Oh, I, I absolutely do believe Joe Biden is the Democratic nominee, of course. Uh, you know, Joe Biden is is leading in New Hampshire right now, which is very important. So it's all about those early states. If we do these general opinion polls, and there are some polls that are swayed towards Trump, and there are some polls that are swayed more towards uh, journalism, let's say. So right now, in New Hampshire, Joe Biden is leading the polls by a lot. Now, Donald Trump, of course, is leading the Republican polls by a lot, but he's under multiple indictments at this point. And I just don't see him having an effective campaign with boots on the ground, with volunteers, with an actual structural campaign staff that's working within the Republican National Committee, which is how you win an election. No, Whilst you're obviously hoping it would be Biden, do you have anybody on your radar just in case, you know, he wasn't well enough or he, he decided not to stand again because he is elderly? Is there anybody you've got in the background you'd say, yep, that's who the Democrats would go for? I don't think we're in that place at all. I mean, President Biden runs around the country multiple times a week. He's, he's working very long hours. I mean, this is a man who is in great shape. He's been, his doctors have said this over and over again. Uh, compared to Donald Trump, lies about his weight. He's basically the same age and is not in great health. I mean, it's just interesting how the Republican talking points about Joe Biden's health have really permeated mass media when there's no indication that he's not absolutely spot on. You know, this is somebody who has more, uh, more experience when it comes to foreign policy. At this moment, I think that is extremely important for us to keep 
you know, our eyes on the ball as a country in that we have a leader who has this four years of experience. Yeah. Namiki Konst, thank you very much indeed for joining us uh, this morning and, and giving us the latest on that.